Welcome back to these tutorials on using shader graph to create a glitch shader. Okay, so we got to the point in part one when we're using this simple noise to multiply against a random value to offset the X in this case. Now, what I want to do is make it a little less erratic by having more of a zigzaggy pattern going through it. Um, so we have to add in a kind of vertical component by getting our simple noise and modifying that so it's straight lines instead. So we can do that if we go back here. And what I'm going to do while I'm in here is actually put on our main preview as well so you can see what's going on in that particular shader. Okay, very erratic at this point. So here's our simple noise. Now what I'm going to do is just come over a little bit, modify the UV values so that we're only working with the Y and we're setting our X UV to basically zero, which is going to give us stripes based on our noise. Okay, so from this, let's bring this out into a split. We're working in reverse here and we'll grab the Y value that we get, that's going to come from a position node. So let's add in our geometry position and we want our Y position in our model, in our object. Now this node is the same as the one that you've got up here. You could just link this down into here, um, but just so that you can see what's going on a little easier, we're doing it like this and duplicating it. Okay, so let's bring this out now and we'll put it into our split. And that's basically giving us these stripes. So if we change the actual scale, you can see how you get different stripey effects going on through that simple noise. And now take a look at the result. We have that zigzagged pattern going down through here. So that the offsets for any particular X at a certain Y are getting multiplied by these stripes of noise. You can see the better effect if we just go up here to the add where we're adding our positions together, how we're getting those offset values in there to give us that sort of zigzaggy pattern. If we pause the video at this point so you can actually see what is being added to our vertex position while we're not actually changing it with time, you can see that that add node there, the black and white pattern that you can see is basically the profile of the noise that we're ending up adding onto our model as far as displacing the X value across the screen. Now, this is kind of uniform, okay? There's a little bit of difference in some of the X offset values, um, but mostly they're kind of all the same. They're either on or off almost to the same position. So what we should do is think about how we could add a little bit more randomness into the amount of offset that we're applying to our X. Okay, so to make the effect more dramatic, you can change your scaling of your simple noise down here, but we could also remap the value that's coming out of our simple noise, because remember it's a zero to one value but we're going to remap it from zero to one and put it between a range of minus one to one. Now you can see those bands are far more uh, emphasized and let's bring that up into our multiply. Then if we come up here and have a look at what we're getting here, you can see that it's a lot better as far as being erratic and the difference in the X offset. And play around with that X value if you wanna get that down to something a little bit nicer like that there. Okay, so that's now given us a really nice basic offset for our noise. Okay, so let's uh, save that and we'll just go back and have a look in our model to see what's happening. Okay, so we're getting closer to the effect that I had previously. Now, what we need to do with this is obviously you don't want it glitching all of the time, especially in this sort of a scenario. You want to be able to see your model for a bit and then it glitch at a random time. So it's kind of an unexpected effect. And so we need to then control that aspect of our time scale so that sometimes a glitching is on and sometimes it's not. 
All right, so back in our shader, what we're going to do is to use another time node to control the values that are coming out so we can turn them on and off. Now, something that cycles around in your shader is the sine wave. So it cycles over time between negative one and one. So we can actually use this as a kind of switch. So I'm going to grab this time section and I'm just going to bring it over to here because we actually need to add in another multiply against this using our time. So we're going to first of all create a time node and for this node we're going to use sine time. Now that's going to come out and get remapped because it's going to be a value between negative and one and one but we want it to be between zero and one for sort of on and off values and as you can see you're already getting a cycling of your sine wave happening down in here where it's going from black to white through these gray values so this output here we can actually add in another multiply node and if we put that there and then we'll grab the output from that multiply bring it into there and then bring this one up into here then we'll see a difference in appearance and see how it's getting really really erratic and that's when the sine wave is fully white and then it peters out to nothing so it's actually turning it off again cyclically which is a nice effect not what we're after but let's just save this and have a little look of it on the actual model so if we go back in here you'll see it gets increasingly erratic and then it comes back to normal and then it wobbles back out again and of course if you wanted to keep that effect that's fine you could add in a another multiplying factor if you want to slow down the change in the time here so if you just multiply put a multiply in here and play around with the value that you're multiplying it with such as a smaller value below one then you will slow that effect down okay so that's nice but not what we're after we actually want to add a bit of randomness into this calculation as well so what I'm going to do is pretty much do the same thing whoops that we've got going on over with our time and our range there is bring this time out of here and we're going to create a random value and bring that in as the seed. Now this value can be between zero and one, that's fine. But we're gonna use this as a step value for this, which is going to basically get rid of those gray values in between and just give us black and white, so on or off. So let's bring this output from there up and we'll put it into a step. We'll put it in as the in to our step. This remap will come down into the edge. Notice now that this cycling through the grayscale is now way more erratic as far as it's just white and it's just black and you've got rid of the that effect. So we'll get rid of the out from our remap coming up to our multiply. Instead, bring this out from our step up to our multiply. That's going to create a way more erratic effect in here as far as on and off and you can already see that happening. Okay so if we just save this and go back and have a look at our Slenderman model you'll see that we have times when it's completely off and then times when it glitches out. And of course you can control that by putting in a multiply in for your sine value. So it actually runs a little bit slower. So let's have a look at doing that. So our time sign is down here. Our sign is coming into our remap. So in here, we actually want to multiply that by a particular glitch speed, I guess we could call it. So we're going to open up our blackboard. We're going to create a new node. Let's make a float and we'll call this our glitch speed like that okay now this is going to come in here and be multiplied by our sine value so let's just move this down a little bit we'll bring our sine value out we'll put in multiply doesn't matter which one you put it in but our glitch speed will come down 
into there. Let's just roll that up out of the way and then we'll use this as our input into our remap. Now the glitch speed at this moment is going to be set to probably zero. So let's select it or over in the blackboard, open up our graph inspector so that we can set this glitch speed. We're going to make it into a slider and we can have it going from any particular values that we like. We want to stay at zero for the minimum and we could set that to say five for the maximum. Okay, at zero, we're not really getting any cycling with our sine wave. You can see that this value here for our remap of our sine is getting multiplied by zero for our sine. So it's always being fed zero coming in here, which doesn't give us much movement at all. If we change the default value for our slider to say five, which is our maximum value, you can now see that this is going to pulse in and out between zero and one a lot slower or um, stays on those values for a longer time. So if we actually went to our maximum value here, and set it to 10 and then bring our slider up to 10. It's going to stay basically on the values for longer for each particular one. So this is just one way you can control when that glitching happens and when it's not happening. Okay, so if we save that and just switch back and have a look at Slenderman now, over in the inspector, if you select your glitch material that we created, you can actually play around with this glitch speed. And if I go up to 10 in this particular case, you'll start to see that this is going to slow down as far as staying still for a while. And then it will come back and be erratic and then be still again. So you've got that on and off. There's so many different things you can actually do with this shader to turn these values on and off and to make them random that now you've basically got enough knowledge to play around with what we've been doing. And what you'll notice mostly is that as you want to change the effects that you're getting, we keep multiplying by values because basically shaders are all about values of zero and one and in order to integrate those we want to actually multiply them so that we end up with either a value or no value at all in this particular case. All right so that's a basic glitch shader. When we come back in the next lecture I'll just show you how you can add in the color if you want to color on your model as well. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.